Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. And in today's video lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the BGP backdoor feature. Now, I know I haven't gotten any new videos out here in a while, and that's because I've actually been working very hard developing a CCENT, or Cisco Certified Entry Level Technician course that uh, I've just got done offering live for the very first time out here in Grand Rapids, Michigan and uh, been working really hard at that so I haven't had a whole lot of time but trying to get some new videos and blogs up for you guys here coming up shortly. So with that being said let's jump into the BGP backdoor feature. This is more of an advanced feature uh, for you CCIE route and switch uh, maybe CCNP candidates out there or people that just generally like to learn about uh, networking. So the BGP backdoor feature, what it allows us to do really is prefer a backdoor link, hence the name of the, the technology, allows us to prefer a backdoor link as opposed to a main link through something like say usually a service provider. So let me explain a little further. We'll go through the diagram of what we're working with here today. So we've got three routers here, right? Router 2, 5, and 4. And uh, we'll say router 2 is one remote site and router 5 is another remote site. And they have a link to each other two different ways. The first way is down through router 4 through this frame relay uh, service provider. So they both connect into the service provider clouds here and through that they're able to talk. The second way is through this backdoor link running just HDLC, just a point-to-point -point serial link. So two different ways the sites can talk. Now on the routing end, you'll see that on the backdoor link, we're actually running OSPF as our IGP. Between the remote site and the service provider, so between router 2 and 4, and between router 4 and 5, we're running eBGP. So router 2 is an AS2, router 4 is AS4, router 5 is an AS5, and both 2 and 5 peer down to router 4. As far as routes, for the example, uh, router 2 and router 5 each have a loopback address that they're advertising into both OSPF and BGP. So. Um, now that we have the background on the topology, let's think about how are things going to work out of the box. If we just let the cards fall um, where they will, what's going to happen here? If router 2 wants to ping 5.5.5.5, what's going to happen? Well, if you said it's going to route over the frame relay through the service provider, then you would be right. And the reason is router 2 is going to learn about 5.5.5.5 through two different ways. It's going to learn it over the backdoor link through OSPF and it's going to learn it through the service provider through eBGP. Now eBGP of course has a much lower administrative distance of 20 than OSPF whose administrative distance is 110. So it's going to go ahead and prefer the lower AD and route through the service provider. Now that's all well and good and great if that's the way you want your packets to route. But what if I were to tell you I want router 2 and router 5 to talk to each other through the backdoor link instead? Well traditionally there's a few things we can do to make that happen. We could alter the administrative distance um, of either OSPF or BGP on router 2 and router 5 so that OSPF would be more preferred. Um, now that's not always a feasible solution in the real world. It's not something you might always want to do, particularly with BGP, because we can change the AD of eBGP routes, but we kind of have to do it for all of them. We can't really say just this specific route. We want to change the AD. So we'd be changing the AD for all the BGP routes, or all the external BGP routes. With OSPF, we can tweak it down by tying the routes we want to change to an access list and the router ID of where they came from, so it makes it a little more flexible, but that's not what this video is about. This is about another way to do it called the BGP backdoor feature. Now basically what the backdoor feature does is it says, 
okay BGP I'm gonna tell you some network and if I receive that network um, through BGP I'm gonna go ahead and give it an administrative distance of 200 sort of like an IBGP route that way any of your IGPs running like OSPF, EIGRP, RIP are gonna go ahead and be more preferred due to them having a lower administrative distance so really it says what routes you specify what routes you want to take the backdoor link and once you specify those routes it will go ahead and modify the AD for you now before we get too much into implementing it let's just make sure our basic configuration is working well so I'm going to jump onto the council here of router 2 and let's just verify our routing I've already configured the IP addresses and the routing protocols for the most part and the frame relay because that's not really the point of this video so let's just do a show IP OSPF neighbor you see we do have a peering here with router 5 let's make sure our BGP is up down to the service provider so show IP BGP summary and we can see we are peered up with router 4 he's in AS4 and we're receiving our one prefix so that's cool let's check the other side jump onto router 5 and I'm gonna say show IP OSPF neighbor we do have an adjacency show IP BGP summary and I am peering with router 4 here over the frame relay and AS4 and I'm getting my prefix so that looks good let's check out the routing table over on router 2 so show IP route and the one I'm really concerned with is this guy right here now as we said that's the loopback over on router 5 and you can see we're learning it through BGP and the administrative distance right here is 20 because it is an eBGP route so let's jump back over to the diagram for a second and like we said we're learning it through eBGP with an 80 of 20 we're learning it through OSPF 80 of 110 so we're gonna choose this way let's just make sure we have reachability I'm gonna source that from my loopback we're good to go there and we can see here that it is going through the frame relay through the service provider let's just let that trace go through hopefully it will oh you know what it's not going to have a return route to that interface you see what's happening here is my trace is being sourced from this serial interface and I'm not advertising that into any routing protocol so router 5 is not going to know how to get back so let's stop that and let's do a trace and we're going to source that from loopback 0 and we can see that it goes over the frame relay so that's what we expected now what we're gonna do is make our change so I'm gonna go into first let me show you guys just what I've done so here's the OSPF config very simple I'm advertising in my loopback and the HDLC link and in BGP very simple I'm advertising in the network and I have my neighbor statement so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go into BGP and I'm gonna say network 5.5.5.5 slash 32 backdoor now normally the network command tells BGP to go ahead and advertise a network that's not what I'm doing here because I have the backdoor keyword on it it's just saying when I receive 5.5.5.5 go ahead and treat that as an AD of 200 I'm gonna do the opposite on the other side so here's what I have and I'm gonna say network 2222 backdoor so we'll give that a minute to crunch and then what we're gonna do let's jump back to router 2 
and I'm going to say show IP route and sure enough we see that it changed because now OSPF has the lower AD of 110 because it went ahead and made the AD coming through BGP 200 so now I will prefer the backdoor link here which is exactly what the feature is supposed to do let's just verify our reachability ping looks good and let's trace as well and we can see it's going directly over that HDLC link so that all looks good just to see the administrative distance change BGP is going to do I'm going to go ahead and shut down that serial link so the point to point link is S020 on router 2 and I'm going to say shut down we should see OSPF go down and we'll look at the routing table again now we can see BGP took over but the administrative distance even though it's eBGP is now 200 due to the backdoor change We'll bring the link back up and now OSPF should take back over take a second here to converge and there we go so we're reconverged now through OSPF and the HDLC link that's about it for the BGP backdoor feature again very useful feature if you'd rather prefer a backdoor link between uh, remote sites as opposed to going through usually some sort of service provider or you know a main link main and backdoor are of course relative to your situation but that's about it there's also a fresh blog on this topic over on my blog at astorinonetworks.com uh, make sure to check that out and a bunch of the other blogs I have written there and you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at jastorino and of course you know the YouTube channel uh, astorinonetworks on YouTube until next time guys keep studying hard